So let me share with you 16 of the best Mac apps, widget and features that helps me boost my productivity and makes my life so much more easier in using my beloved M1 MacBook Air in 2022. Let's get right into it. Let's begin with the app called Rectangle. This is a free app that lets you move, resize or use split screen to help you multitask by using simple keyboard shortcuts. What I love about this app is that it sits right on top of the menu bar and as you click on the icon it shows a list of shortcuts helping you resize, minimize, expand or move the windows around quickly without having to click on multiple options. So with its default general setting, by pressing Ctrl, Option and right, left, up or down keys, it automatically resizes the position of the window so that you can add another window into the empty space allowing you to multitask with ease. There are tons of customization options to suit your liking and you can add many split screens in different dimensions as well. Next up is a free, quick and simple calculator that sits on top of your menu bar. By pressing the icon on the menu bar, the calculator drops down like a search bar and so you can do your calculations or solve your basic algebra equations. What appeals to me most is that it's always there when you need it without having to go off your main window. The next one is also quite simple but very useful. If staying focused while working on your Mac is an issue for you, then this app may solve your struggle. It's a timer that sits on your menu bar or on your main screen to help you track your tasks or assignments so you can focus on one task you set your timer for. You can also set short or long intervals or add breaks to give you flexibility and help you stay focused. This is an advanced utility app that helps you track your Mac performance. You can monitor all the aspects of your Mac in detail from battery health to memory load and everything in between. It's useful for the tech savvy and those who want to know how every component of the Mac is functioning. Now let me take you to some of the most practical inbuilt Mac widgets and features that are used on a daily basis to help me stay productive. Starting with the screen capture and record feature. Now this by far is the best Mac feature that helps you capture image or record your screen and gives you the flexibility to edit your screen capture or screen recording as you like to serve your basic needs. I use it all the time. It's simple, easy to use with the shortcut keys once you get a hang of it. Next up is night shift feature on your Mac. When I'm working on my MacBook at night, one of the things that help me reduce the strain on my eyes is the shift of tone in the display to a warmer end of the color spectrum. I have set it on sunrise to sunset option so the color tone automatically changes after dark. But I turn this feature off when I'm working on editing my videos to see the correct color tone of the project. Now Mac comes with great weather, clock and mini calendar widget that does the job it's supposed to do. Without cluttering your Mac with a bunch of unnecessary apps, these inbuilt widget does the job while being aesthetically pleasing. Now this is a no-nonsense yet very capable free video editor for all your basic to moderate video editing needs. We don't require multiple layers, LUTs or some heavy color grading or pro effects in your videos. And I use this app for pretty much all my YouTube videos. It's easy to use, gets the job done just fine, especially for those of you who are new to video editing or have started a YouTube channel and don't want to spend on a paid video editing software. And for those of you who are already familiar with editing but want to enhance your skill and for free, DaVinci Resolve is the best way to go for. It does have a paid version but the free version itself carries a ton of features that you will get so indulged into you won't need those extra elements in the pro version as long as you're not a professional video editor. DaVinci is also the perfect choice for those of you who want to master your skills in color grading. Next up is an audio editor that is used not only by beginners but also professionals in the field of media. What I like about Audacity is you get plenty of features to play around with in order to learn how to make your audio better in every way possible. From noise reduction to reverb and compressor, you get pretty much everything you need to make your audio quality sound crisp and clean and all of that for free. For all my thumbnail, video intros and social media makeups, I use Canva. It's a free online graphic design tool that lets you create presentations, posters, videos, logos and more. But I use it mainly for thumbnail creation. 
It has a variety of free templates to choose from and the customization options are just on another level. For a free tool like this, you really don't need to look anywhere else. Another app or tool that is similar to Canva is Adobe Express. I use it to mainly remove background from images, but also to create thumbnails, transitions and intros. It does have a paid version which gets you more quality templates and some extra features to work with, but for most part, this is a great alternative to Canva. I use Safari when I'm working on Canva or Adobe Express mainly because it is simply light and does not use much memory. Safari is also my go-to for general browsing and simple research work. But when I'm using YouTube, Google Keep, Maps, I tend to use Chrome because these apps being optimized for Google works really well. And certain plugins such as WidIQ and TubeBuddy for YouTube Studio works only with Chrome, allowing you to fully utilize the browser efficiently. When it comes to note-taking, writing scripts or noting down my to-do lists, I use Google Keep. The reason for using this is that it's not just limited to Mac OS. I find this to be a more flexible way of keeping all my note-taking synchronized into one place. I can use it not only on Mac OS, but if needed, I can open this on any Windows machine or Android phone as well. It's the flexibility that makes me use this app mostly. And when I'm using only my MacBook or iPhone for notes that I don't want to access often, I use the Notes app. This helps me keep my most important notes separately and safe in one place. And this pretty much sums up our video for today. Hope this was useful. If you like this video, please press the like button and consider subscribing for more no-nonsense tech-related content that may add value. And talking of value, this video has helped hundreds of viewers on making the right buying decision between the M1 MacBook Air and the M2. Click on this to learn more. See you next week.